Okay, today we're going to take a look at the Byzantine Empire in a little more depth. Uh, just to remind you, um, well, actually, start out by you know taking your notebook out, and uh, you can add to the notes that you've taken for today. Um, otherwise, if you didn't do it, you can just take notes regular. Uh, so, anyways, uh, as I've mentioned before, the Byzantine Empire uh, was really the old Roman Empire. Again, it was divided into east and west in the 395 um, and the eastern portion really considered itself to be the Roman Empire. I mentioned this before in class uh, but definitely worth mentioning again. Um, so the, the main focus today uh, will be on Justinian. So Justinian is the most significant uh, leader of the Byzantine Empire uh, another one, another guy will be highlighted uh, in the video today in a little bit. Uh, but anyways, Justinian uh, becomes the head of the Eastern Empire in 527. Uh, one of the things he's going to do, I'm going to go back to the map here, uh, is he is going to let me just get rid of this. Uh, he is going to be the one that that sends Belisarius, who you read about, uh, back to the west to try to recapture. Rome, other parts of North Africa, into southern Spain. Uh, so he does this, and, and this is somewhat successful. Uh, it's kind of a constant struggle, though, and eventually they're going to uh, get out of there. Uh, but anyways, Justinian is an absolute ruler, uh, and he is not only the ruler of the Byzantine Empire, but also he's the ruler of the church. So you can see that in this depiction uh, you have the crown on his head indicating that he is the emperor and then you also have this halo around his head which you know indicates that he is of religious significance as well so this is going to be one of the first real separations uh, in the church uh, tomorrow we'll talk more about the uh, actual split in the in the church between uh, Roman Catholicism and Eastern Orthodox uh, but that's going to be the first step there. Uh, now we looked at Justinian's code yesterday, so we know that he has this uniform law code, um, so we don't need to go into too much depth there. Uh, but one of the things that he is going to do is build up Constantinople. Uh, he's going to deal with a, a number of issues. You'll see some of them um, in the video today. Uh, and we'll focus on really more of the bad things about him in the video. Um, but one of the things that's going to take place is in the Hippodrome, which again you'll see uh, after a riot breaks out there, uh, he's going to uh, decide to rebuild Constantinople and the city. So he's going to build more fortifications. So you can see some walls here and here. Uh, he's going to add to this to protect uh, the city. He's going to um, enlarge his palace, so the area of the Great Palace and the house of Justinian. He's going to build onto that. He's going to have baths built uh, throughout the city. I don't see any of them on here. Um, he has aqueducts built. So this is going to help bring water into the city. Uh, law courts, again, to tie along with Justinian's code. Uh, schools and hospitals. Um, so he's spending a lot of money uh, on this and this is going to affect them a lot with taxation. And one of the things that he's going to build that's you know, really going to cost the most uh, but really leave his legacy, uh, and I'm going to erase all this other stuff and circle uh, the Hagia Sophia. Okay, This is going to be uh, the most splendid church in Christendom. Uh, so here it is. Uh, you can see the outside of it and the inside. Um, and you're going to take a look at the video, so I won't go too much into depth here. Uh, but it starts out as a Christian church. Uh, the Muslims, when they take it over, it becomes a mosque. And now it is actually a museum. Okay, now another thing about the Byzantine Empire is that they are going to be really the keepers of uh, Greco-Roman culture for the time. Uh, they keep this thing going with classical learning. Uh, you know, people like Homer, Plato, Aristotle, Euclid, Herodotus, uh, they keep that knowledge, whereas in Western Europe, uh, they're not really focused on that, they don't know about it. Um, but after Justinian, that's going to all change too, 
and really the Muslims are going to then become the keepers of that knowledge that eventually will translate that and translate it back uh, later on in, in Western Europe later as it recovers will re-embrace some of this culture. Okay, so now in dealing with the fall of the empire, uh, really they're going to deal with a bunch of bad leaders after Justinian. You're going to have a decent guy named Basil take over. Uh, you'll learn about him in the video. And then after him, you've got more poor leadership. There's a period uh, where 88 Byzantine empires rule, 29 of them are murdered, uh, 13 of them abandon and go off to live in monasteries. So you've got a number of internal issues, uh, but on top of that you have external issues that the Byzantine Empire has to deal with. All right, so one of the things that the empire deals with is uh, uh, externally, and then it turns into internally, are a series of plagues. Um, there's one that happens under Justinian's reign, but there are plagues that happen later as well. All right, so one of the biggest things, though, that they're going to face are attacks from the outside. Um, one example, 1071, uh, the Battle of Manzikert takes place uh, in Asia Minor, and the uh, Seljuk Turks win, and they now have control of most of Asia Minor. So you can see kind of at the same time, the Byzantine Empire is shrinking this way. So you have other threats as well. Um, we've got the Crusades taking place, which uh, really is the Western Europeans trying to take back the Holy Land here. Uh, but the Fourth Crusade takes place in 1202, and they divert and attack Constantinople instead. So it's another thing that they're dealing with. Uh, but ultimately, eventually, what's going to happen is you have uh, the Ottoman Empire taking over this region later. They advance into this portion of the Byzantine Empire, and they enclose in on Constantinople and eventually conquer it and overthrow it, and this is when it becomes uh, Istanbul. And this takes place in 1453. So 1453, the Byzantine Empire is over.